Michael here, back for another absolutely massive week in LEGO news. With everything you need to know from Comic-Con, including reveals from Star Wars Ahsoka, Gordon $30 Gringotts Bank, and convention exclusives, the next LEGO idea set, plus what's going on with LEGO Marvel pricing, and are these the creepiest LEGO sets ever? And I'll kick off another round of the weekly giveaway. Just subscribe and leave a comment about this week's news. And of course, I'm back with LEGO deals from Amazon and across the web, so if you want to pick anything up to support the channel, there's links in the description below. First up over at Walmart, the LEGO Minecraft Warp Forest, Pyroraptor and Dilophosaurus Transport, and Triceratops Dinosaur Pig pickup truck ambush are 33% off. And at Amazon, the Quetzal Coat Less Plain Ambush set is 33% off. From Star Wars, Obi-Wan Kenobi vs. Darth Vader, and from Harry Potter, the Ministry of Magic sets are 30% off. Plus, the 501st Clone Trooper Battle Pack is 15% off. From Black Panther, King Namor's Throne Room is 46% off. And from Super Mario, the Cat Peach Suit and Frozen Tower set is 44% off. From Lightyear, Zerg Battle is 40% off. And from Lego City, the Shark Attack Stunt is 50% off. The Barn and Farm Animals is 36% off. And the Lunar Space Station is 31% off. Over at Lego, you can get the free Fun Creativity 12-in-1 set with purchases over $80, which is perfect since they've got a bunch of sets still on sale. So if you want to pick up any of these deals and more and support the channel, there's links in the description below for everything. Next up in Comic-Con news, social media is buzzing about LEGO's presence at Comic-Con. LEGO's booth was themed as Brickbuster Video, a parody of Blockbuster. And to me, this was so nostalgic down to the membership cards. There were large-scale builds like this one of Sonic, Captain America featuring the new Shield set, and a Star Wars one to make it look like you're riding a speeder. Speaking of Star Wars, they had all the August sets on display, as well well as the reveal of the new sets from Ahsoka. The first set is Ahsoka Tana's T6 Jedi shuttle with 599 pieces retailing for $80. Ahsoka's ship turned out really nice with that dark red color scheme, and it can fly in different configurations thanks to the rotating cockpit. The ship is equipped with stud shooters and fold-out landing gear, plus some additional storage on top and booster engines in the back. This set also features four minifigures. First up, we've got Ahsoka Tana with that great headpiece, arm and leg printing, plus two lightsabers. Next, we've got Sabine Wren with great torso and leg printing, a lightsaber, per purple hair, and a Mandalorian helmet. Next, we've got a minifigure for Hu Yang with that awesome new head mold and leg printing. And finally, we've got the Inquisitor Merrick with that great helmet mold, plus armor and great printing. Next up, we've got the New Republic Ewing vs. Shin Hati Starfighter with 1,056 pieces, retailing for $110. This is yet again another great space battle set featuring two great ships. The New Republic Ewing is super interesting with that great color scheme and unique angles. Plus, there's stud shooters, hidden storage, and landing gear. I also like the colors and shaping of the other ship. Plus, it has lots of hidden storage and stunt shooters. This set comes with five characters. First up, we've got Balin Skull with great printing that continues to the legs, and Shin Hati with great printing, though both could have used orange lightsabers. Next, we've got Morgan Elsbeth with a great new hairpiece, Captain Porter with awesome printing and a new design for the helmet, and I love the colors and unique head style of the New Republic Astromech. Next, the buildable Chewbacca with 2,319 pieces retailing for $200. This latest buildable character is meant to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi, and I think they did a really nice job capturing all the fur detail and the overall pose on that display stand, though many fans are finding his face creepy. I like the build for the bandolier and satchel, and he comes equipped with his bowcaster. There's also a printed plaque for Chewbacca and a Chewbacca minifigure. Next reveal, just before Comic-Con, we have the Harry Potter Gringotts Wizarding Bank Collector's Edition, with 4,803 pieces, retailing for $430 on September 1st. This build of the icon of Diagon Alley looks so unique sitting above the underground mine track, and when fully combined, the build is almost 30 inches tall. Tall. The two halves can also be separated and combined with the Diagon Alley set, which really adds a lot to the display. The build for Gringotts looks nice with its slatted design and slanted columns. Just inside, you've got the main foyer with all the desks, which is a bit smaller than the one from the film. And there's another small area upstairs. And next door to Gringotts is the Magical Menagerie, with lots of detailed stickers. Below, the minecart system looks really amazing as it winds around the model. And there's even a mechanism to stop the cart at the three vaults. Finally, the build for the Ukrainian Iron Belly Dragon looks really great with lots of posability and that unique printed head. This set includes a whopping 13 minifigures, including young Harry Potter with a new face print, Rubius Hagrid, and a new figure for the older Harry Potter. Next, we've got Bellatrix Lestrange and our first Dragomir Despard, plus alternate wet hair and faces for Hermione and Ron. Next up for the goblins, we've got Griphook and Rickbert, plus Bogrod and two goblin bankers with dual molded arms. There's also a nice detailed figure for the Death Eater and two guards. Plus, I love the printed gal. At $430, this set certainly isn't cheap, but it is a very unique display piece. Though like with most large LEGO sets, I wonder how people are going to display this one. Back at Comic-Con, LEGO had a unique exclusive minifigure with an exclusive Be Kind Rewind torso. If you manage to snag a time slot, you could pick from the available parts and assemble your own exclusive minifigure from the convention. And it's that torso that seems to be the exclusive element. Each day, they also had exclusive pins. And these include pins for Sonic, Star Wars, 
Marvel and the Brickbuster video logo. And thanks to an eBay auction, we also get a look at the scavenger hunt prizes, which you'd get by finding a VHS tape, which includes a full set of four pins, this exclusive set of the Lego Masters logo, and an exclusive Lego Masters golden brick keychain. And at the convention, you could even meet Brickmaster Amy and Season 3 Stacy. In the booth, they featured coming attractions, including a previously unrevealed Lego Marvel Avengers Code Red special coming to Disney+. And in addition to having the summer Marvel sets on display, we also got the reveal of the Marvel's The Hoopty, with 420 pieces retailing for $90 on October 1st. The ship is straight out of the new film and features some really unique shaping with the angles and curves. The cockpit can seat all the characters and the flurkins. There's stud shooters on either side, and the whole top opens up to reveal the interior section, with all sorts of equipment. This set includes all of the Marvels. Captain Marvel looks nice with a detailed print, and I like the design for Photon's torso. But Ms. Marvel's design is the real standout to me with that detailed texture. But at $90, this one does seem to be quite expensive, kind of like the Iron Man Armory which we got last year, which had a similar price-to-piece ratio but included eight minifigures. And it makes the set hard to justify, especially since for $10 more, you can get such great sets from Marvel, including the new Spider-Man Final Battle. The LEGO booth also featured all the summer Sonic sets, and even gave you a chance to play the new Sonic game. But it also gave us our first look at the brand new Sonic the Hedgehog Brickheads, with Sonic and Tails, each retailing for $10 on September 1st. These designs are some of the wildest yet, with the large cartoony eyes and unique eye prints. Sonic features a ring as an accessory, plus there's large shoes and all these spikes out the back. Tails features similar shoe designs, a wrench, and two tails, in addition to pointy ears and fur around the face. Despite being creepy, I think these ones are going to go fast. Next, we got the reveal of the upcoming gift with purchase from the Singles Day Contest. Out of the 15 projects selected for the fan vote, five were chosen as runner-ups here, with the ultimate grand prize winner being Reading, Reading, and Reading. This project features a minifigure sitting in a comfortable chair reading a book in front of this great library with ladder. And while certainly simple, it is quite quaint, and I think it'll make a really nice gift with purchase. This week, we also had two more projects that 10,000 supporters on LEGO Ideas. First up, we've got Vintage Toaster. The build looks nice with the curved design, and it definitely has those vintage stylings in color and chrome. But the clean build hides a complex mechanism to place untoasted bread in and get toasted bread out. And on the whole, I think this would make a really funny display. Next up, we've got New York Corner, which is a unique modular style building. I like the staggered look of the buildings, plus all the great outdoor foliage. Plus, inside, there's all sorts of music and a pool hall. On the whole, I really appreciate all the attention to detail and the emphasis on story, as so many are packed inside. But as we just got the Jazz Club and these modular projects don't seem to make it through, I'm of course curious to see how this one will do. But as always, we'll have to wait and see. So there you have it, just another absolutely massive week in LEGO news here at Comic-Con. Seeing all the photos of the booth and the fun exclusives and reveals, I definitely wish I could have been at Comic-Con again this year. And this fall wave of sets is looking really strong with everything from Ahsoka, the Marvels, Sonic the Hedgehog, and more. And leave this video a thumbs up down below if you're as excited as I am. Quick programming note, as I may not be able to make a video next week as I'll be traveling next weekend for a wedding. But don't worry and be sure to subscribe as I'll be back soon with even more LEGO news. And let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What did you think about all the stories? And which one are you most excited about? And now we've got this week's giveaway winner. Congratulations! And be sure to email me from the About page on my channel so we can coordinate about the prize. And if you want to enter this week's round, just leave me a comment about this week's news. You must be a subscriber to win and definitely turn on notifications to find out when my next video is posted because I'll be announcing the winners at the end of some of the videos. That's all the time we've got for today. Thanks and have a good one.